just watering the garden and I want to use the water pump idea to build on the circuit concept that we've been building in Tinkercad. If you remember, we use basic circuit logic that all circuit circuits have four items on them. Basically a power supply, some kind of conductors or wires somewhere to carry the electrons around the circuit, and then the other two. And those are the two that I need to build on. We always had a control, some kind of a switch, something that opened and closed and turned on or off our circuit. That control, if you think about a circuit, is an input signal. Somehow things come into the circuit through that switch. Some kind of a signal to turn on some device or some load, a light bulb, a motor, a buzzer, or something. So we have those two last components, a control or switch, and then a load or something to drive that takes the energy out of the circuit. So I want to build on that idea that all circuits have those basic four components focusing on those last two because we, we take it for granted in any circuit there's a power supply and some conductors to carry it but those inputs those switches that turn on and off the circuit and then those outputs those things that take the energy out whether it's light bulbs or something that's what I want to build on I want to put three ideas in your head basic circuits we've seen that a light switch in your house I'm going to show you a little bit about this pump in a second and then on the high end where we really want to go with Tinkercad are computers computers are very good at running circuits for us with inputs and outputs on a computer but there's this big area in the middle this gray area and sometimes we think we have a computer we have some gadget some electronic -y thing but is it really a computer? It has a power supply, it has wires and stuff, inputs and outputs, but is it really a computer? So again, basic circuits, computers that run things, and this gray area in between. And I'm going to take you inside and show you a few things in my house that I'm going to challenge you, where am I? Basic, gray area, computer. Okay, that's where I want to go. In the basement of our house now, I'm uh, showing you where that water pump is from outside. Uh, we actually have two water sources in our house. This is the water that comes from the town, from Peel region. So this water comes into our house and that's the one we normally use, but it's chlorinated, it's treated water. We also have the water coming from our pump system that comes from an old well on our property and it comes into this pump and I use it for the garden and stuff because it doesn't have any chemicals in it, it's just groundwater. I wouldn't drink the water, but it has the groundwater. Um, it's a basic circuit, but it's a bit of a different basic circuit. Here's the power. Sorry, I'm using my little stick as a bit of things to stay out of the picture, but here is uh, the power that goes in to the electrical switch that controls the motor, and the motor spins this pump. When the pump pumps up, it builds up pressure. You can see the pressure is built up. There's a little line down the bottom here. I don't know if you can kind of see it. Let me see if I can zoom in on it. But that line feeds a pressure hose into the back of the switch. And it's this switch that turns on and off the pump. This is a basic electrical circuit. It doesn't have a computer in it. There's no microprocessor, microcontroller, or anything. But this switch is not a usual on-off switch, if I can call it that. So in this switch, what happens, the pressure pushes on the bottom of the switch, the water pressure in that little hose. And when the pressure drops, when I turn the pump on outside, that pressure goes down, down, down as the water drains out. And eventually inside, the contacts will close. So somewhere inside, there's going to be a little switch, and then it closes. And that turns the power on, and then the pump turns on. And then it slowly starts pumping up pressure, 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 and the pressure underneath will go up till that switch suddenly gets too much pressure, and poop, open the contacts, and the pump motor turns off. If you keep using the water, eventually the pressure drops, and the contacts will close again turns on the motor and back up the coast. So it's really just an open close switch, but it's a kind of a pressure switch, not a normal light switch kind of switch. But it is just a switch. Turns the motor on, turns the motor off. 
no computer controller, but a different kind of switch. Okay, so I'm going to jump upstairs now and show you something else that's just an on-off switch, which is a bit of the gray area. It is, I guess, kind of a computer. Let's go see. Here is another gadget or electrical control circuit thing in our house. I think some of you can recognize it as a thermostat. As much as it looks like maybe a microprocessor, a microcontroller, a computer, really it's just a switch. There are inputs. There's a temperature sensor input. So when the thermostat registers that the house temperature is low, closes the switch, furnace turns on. The warm air gets circulated around. Eventually the thermostat, the thermometer around the, the thermostat will pick up that the temperature has gone up to the set temperature that you want. The switch opens and the furnace turns off. On off switch. Is it a computer? I can program the time of day when I want it to come on, when I want it to come off. So it has different inputs. The output, turn the furnace on, turn the furnace off. It also has an air conditioner control. It's the same concept, kind of reverse. The air in the house gets warmer and warmer and warmer, and eventually it gets set, close the switch, turn the air conditioner on. Temperature comes down, 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 down. When it gets to a set temperature, the thermostat says, oh, open the switch, turn it off. So where do you put this thing? Is it a computer? Is it in that gray area? Or is it just a simple electrical switch? I'll let you decide. Another sort of gadget thing in our house. Uh, probably some of you have similar kinds of appliances in your house, whether uh, on the microwave, stove, fridge, dishwasher, washing machine, etc. And a lot of them have what you think is some kind of a computer controller. It does all these options, you can press things, set things. Really, it has inputs. I can set different uh, settings through the inputs here with different buttons that I press. And then the other inputs, probably somewhere in there, is a heat sensor that tells you when it's up to temperature to turn off certain things. There's a convection fan that gets turned on or off depending what settings. So again, like a lot of circuits, it has inputs, it has outputs. Is it a computer? Or is it just an electrical circuit? Or is it somewhere in that gray area in the middle? It's sometimes confusing to understand that. Up here, looks very computer geeky electronic-y, but is it a computer? Or is it really just a bunch of switches, inputs, outputs, that's it? What do you really have here? I'm not going to say, I, I think you can guess what I think it is, but again, something to think about. In this next example, I'm in my garage with this motorcycle I have, and I've been working on some electrical circuits, trying to upgrade my motorcycle. I put these LED lights on to get added safety and then brighten up my presence on the road. And I've been working on trying to figure out how to wire it into the electrical circuits of this motorcycle. I also bought a high output horn for driving around to get people's attention. This is a very loud horn, but it also requires a special circuit on here to connect through. So building on the idea of circuit types, what do I have here? Do I have just a basic circuit? A basic kind of typical circuit with a switch, power supply, some wires, and a, and a load? Do I have a computer up in the high end? A computer that has inputs and outputs and decisions are being programmed into the computer. 
or am I into some gray area where I have some kind of an electronic looking kind of thing? Hiding under the seat of the motorcycle right here, there is actually a computer module. It's a, it's a controller kind of gadget thing. And throughout the motorcycle, there's all kinds of input sensors. Down in the engine, there's a sensor that measures the temperature. When the engine gets too hot, the radiator fan turns on, and that's an output. So the computer measures the temperature, that's an input, and I guess it decides that when the temperature gets too hot, as an output, turn the fan on to cool things off. When the engine senses a certain speed from the throttle, then the fuel injections spray in a certain amount of gasoline to make the uh, motorcycle go a certain speed. And if I turn off on the throttle, then I guess the fuel injection gets a signal from the computer to squirt less gas in, and, and back and forth it goes. So is this uh, motorcycle just electrical circuits? Is it a computer controller? Or is it somewhere in a gray area where it's not really a computer, it's just an electronic circuit with inputs and outputs. I'm not going to decide for you. Uh, the logic of the motorcycle is very similar, if not identical, to the logic of a car. Cars also have some kind of, sorry, I should say modern cars have typically some kind of a computer controller on it, microprocessor, something on it. Is it a true computer like we think of? in terms of, say, a laptop or a dumb smartphone or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. This last type of uh, electrical circuit that I wanted to share is probably the most obvious to us. This laptop computer. Is it just an electrical circuit? Yes, it is. In fact, if you've ever taken one apart, there's thousands of electrical circuits inside of it. But is it an electronic gadget? Is it on that gray area? Or is it definitely a computer? And I think we can agree it is a computer. But the truth is, it really is just an electrical device that happens to have a whole bunch of special kinds of processors and components inside of it. I want to put another idea into your head because this is where I'm going to go with this whole microprocessor electronics computer circuit thing in Tinkercad. If you view this thing as just a device, maybe some of you have heard this before um, for computer concepts, but it has inputs and outputs. Somewhere inside there is the guts of it, the motherboard, the main processor, but we take information in and out of a computer through I.O. they call it. I.O. is short for inputs and outputs. So what are the typical inputs on a computer? Well, the most obvious one is the mouse and the keyboard. They're really just switches hooked up. When I, be careful here, when I click, click, switch, switch, I'm just clicking electrical switches and sending electrical signals into the microprocessor. Each key I press on the keyboard, they're really underneath, if you've ever taken apart, is a little switch. Click, click, click. That's what's going on in there. I can get inputs from different types of things, camera, microphone, whatever. On the other side, what's coming out at me? Well, the screen is a big output on a computer. Typically, you have a screen. But in my previous example, there's a computer, somewhat computer, controlling my motorcycle. Where's the screen? Is the dashboard the screen? Eh, maybe. Speakers on here. Those are outputs. Things are coming out. Little things. You see LEDs sometimes for power, Wi-Fi, different reasons. Those are outputs. Somewhere something in the circuit board closes the switch, lets electricity through, and that LED lights up. So there's all these different concepts going on in this computer, but the gist of it is it's just a it's just an electrical circuit. So I'm going to zoom in on this picture. Hopefully this will work because I just want to use my little cheapy whiteboard here. If you look at any electrical computer gadget circuit, 
you have these sort of conditions that sort of decide whether you have something that is a computer or not. Typically, you have to have some kind of a CPU processor. You have to have some kind of a computer part that uh, does all the crunching for it. And the big difference, what makes it a computer, is whether you can program it. Whether you can go in and set up a code, set up some Python coding or Java coding or something to make the computer do what you want it to do. Virtually all computer uh, processors or something have some kind of inputs. Keyboard, mouse, whatever. If it's on something like my motorcycle, there could be sensors on the engine, sensors on the wheels, it could be switches on the handlebars, it could be all kinds of different inputs. Outputs, again on a typical laptop computer, we have the screen, we have speakers, LEDs, different things that send information out. On my motorcycle, what are the outputs? Eh, not so sure. Sometimes the outputs go to other things on, say, the engine or stuff. Certain sensors say things to the computer for the motorcycle engine, and then it sends information out to other sensors or other devices on the computer, uh, on the motorcycle engine or on the motorcycle itself. Most CPU processors have somewhere to store things might be an SD card, might be RAM chips, might be a hard drive, it might be an in-out connection to a cloud-based server, but you typically have those things somewhere. Um, probably you level 4 thinkers and stuff are already imagining there must be certain types of processors or computers that don't have all of those things. Um, it'd be hard-pressed to find a microprocessor, gadget, control, computer, something that doesn't have an output. Why would we humans build a machine that doesn't do something for us? It'd be hard to figure out why you would build a machine that doesn't need any inputs. Although there may be some examples I'm not thinking of offhand. Probably a lot of us have had very basic gadgety computer things they don't really have any memory storage. Maybe that thermostat example I used earlier for my house, I don't think it actually has any memory in it per se, but maybe I'm wrong. So I'm building on those ideas because what I want to show in the next uh, video is where we're going in Tinkercad. And what we want to do is I want to get you to start learning how to use one of these. These are microprocessors. And if you take the TEJ courses in our school, you will use these computers, these microprocessor or microcontroller computers to run your circuits. And I want to build on that. This one is called an Arduino microprocessor, and I'm going to show more of that later. How I can use this on my breadboard to control some circuits. There are other microcontrollers, and in our school we also use this one. It's a Raspberry Pi. It also is a computer, and I can control stuff on the inputs and outputs based on the how I code the, the chip on it. So in the next videos, I want to build on the idea that all computers are basically input-output devices. Sometimes it's a bit of a gray area. Do I actually have a computer or do I just have some gadgety thing? And then we're going to make some simple circuits in Tinkercad using one of these things. That's it for now.